Hello, my name is Jessica, and I'm a registered dietitian at Windsor Regional Hospital. I'll be going over the nutrition portion of today's presentation. As you have heard earlier, there are many different risk factors for developing a stroke, lifestyle choices being one of them. To help lower your risk of developing a stroke and preventing many other diseases, it is recommended to quit smoking, exercise regularly, eat a healthy diet, which includes choosing foods that are lower in sodium and in saturated and trans fats, maintain a healthy weight, limit your alcohol consumption, and reduce your stress. Part of lowering your risk also includes keeping in touch with your doctor. It is important for all of us to monitor our blood cholesterol levels. Here we have three different types of cholesterol that are tested with routine lab work. LDL cholesterol is a lousy type of cholesterol and should be low in value as high amounts can lead to plaque buildup in the arteries. If your LDL cholesterol is elevated, following a diet low in saturated and trans fat and high in soluble fiber can improve this value. HDL cholesterol is a healthy type of cholesterol and should be high in value. This cholesterol helps to remove other forms of cholesterol from the bloodstream. If your HDL cholesterol is low, increasing your consumption of healthy fats, exercising regularly, achieving a healthy body weight, and quitting smoking can improve your value. Calories that we consume that are not immediately needed for energy are converted into triglycerides and stored as fat. Following a diet low in refined carbohydrates and minimal alcohol can help to keep your triglycerides low. A healthy diet can help lower your risk of heart disease and stroke by improving your cholesterol levels, reducing your blood pressure, helping to manage your body weight, and controlling your blood sugar. So now that we know some of the many reasons why to follow a healthy, balanced diet, we can discuss exactly what this entails. Following a balanced plate method of eating encourages consumption of food from all food groups, portion control, and adequate nutrient intake. It is recommended to have half of your plate filled with at least two kinds of vegetables, a quarter of your plate filled with grains and starches, and the remaining one quarter filled with meat and alternatives. To round off your meal, consume a milk or alternative and have a fruit as your dessert. One thing not shown on the plate is added fats and oils. But of course, they have a place in our diet as they play an important role in healthy eating. There are three types of fats that we will talk about today. Saturated, trans, and unsaturated fats. All foods containing fat have a mix of specific types of fat. Even healthy foods like chicken and nuts have saturated fat, though much less than the amounts found in beef, cheese, and ice cream. Eating greater amounts of saturated fat is linked with an increased risk of heart disease, stroke, and high blood cholesterol levels. These fats are usually solid at room temperature and are found in higher concentrations in the following foods. Meat, such as fatty cuts in beef, pork and lamb, poultry skin, and processed meats like salami. Dairy foods, such as butter, cream, ice cream, full fat milk, and cheese. Also found in tropical oils, such as coconut oil, milk and cream, palm and palm kernel oil, and margarine. There are also higher amounts of saturated fat found in many packaged and restaurant foods, such as potato chips, french fries, hamburgers, cakes and high-fat muffins, pastries, and pies. Trans fat is considered the most harmful type of fat. It can increase your risk of heart disease and stroke. Trans fat may also increase blood vessel inflammation that can increase your risk for other health problems. Trans fats are formed through the industrial process of hydrogenation, where liquid oils are made into semi-solid fats like her margarine or shortening. Choose soft, non-hydrogenated margarines and avoid products containing hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated vegetable oil or shortening. By law, trans fat must be included on the nutrition facts table on packaged foods. Look for products with close to zero grams of trans fat. Cholesterol is a type of fat found in food, but also in our blood. Cholesterol has many important functions in the body, but having high levels the wrong type of cholesterol in the blood increases heart disease risk. It was once thought that eating too many cholesterol-containing foods, such as eggs, was the major dietary cause of high blood cholesterol levels. But we now, now know that eating too many foods containing a higher amount of saturated and trans fat is a bigger problem and has a much greater influence on our blood cholesterol levels than dietary cholesterol. You should aim to include mostly unsaturated fats in your diet. Unsaturated fats help to increase levels of HDL or healthy cholesterol in our blood and contributes to good cardiovascular health. Omega-3, omega-6, and omega-9 are examples of types of unsaturated fat. Good sources of these healthy fats include vegetable oils, nuts and seeds, avocado, 
fish, and soft non-hydrogenated margarines. Examples of healthier fat choices include canola, safflower, flaxseed, sunflower, corn, olive, soybean, and peanut oils. Non-hydrogenated margarines, as they provide less saturated fat as compared to butter, oil and vinegar-based salad dressings, unsalted nuts, such as walnuts, peanuts, and almonds, seeds, such as flax, sunflower, sesame, and pumpkin, natural nut butters, as there is no added salt or sugar, and avocados. One of the food groups that make up one quarter of the plate is our meat and alternatives. Foods from this category are more likely to contain higher amounts of saturated fats. Healthier meat and alternative choices with lower amounts of saturated fat include poultry with skin removed, fish, lean cuts of meat with fat trimmed, such as extra lean ground beef, soy products such as tofu, soy milk, or soy or tofu cheese, legumes such as kidney beans, lentils, and all other peas and beans, and eggs. It is important to limit poultry with skin, heavily marbled meats, regular ground beef, pork or chicken, processed meats such as sausage, salami, bologna, frozen prepared meats, battered and or fried fish or poultry, short ribs, spare ribs, side bacon, and sausages. And remember to always check the food label when buying anything in a package. We'll go through this together shortly. Next on our plate are vegetables, which should make up one half of the plate, and fruit, which should be found on the side, ideally as our dessert option. It is important to include adequate amounts of vegetables and fruit in your day as they are filled with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and are high in fiber. It is always best to choose fresh or frozen vegetables and fruit over canned, dried, juices, or soups. When vegetables are put into a can, salt is often added, and when fruit is put into a can, sugar is often added. Consuming fresh vegetables and fruit provides optimum fiber, less sugar, and less sodium. Vegetables and fruit that should be chosen less often include vegetables frozen in cream or butter sauces, cream-based soups, olives and pickled vegetables, scalloped veggies, fried veggies, fruit can and juice and or syrup, and regular juice. As mentioned, vegetables and fruit are a good source of fiber. Most of us know that a high fiber diet is important, but why? Fiber can help keep blood cholesterol and blood sugar under control, which may reduce the risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes. It may help prevent certain cancers, and there has been new research showing the benefits of fiber in managing weight. Another benefit of eating plenty of fiber is to promote bowel health and regularity, which can reduce the risk of bowel diseases such as diverticulitis. Therefore, the answer to the above question is E, all of the above. There are two types of fiber, insoluble and soluble. Many foods are rich in both sources, such as flaxseed, psyllium, vegetables, and fruit. Insoluble fiber cannot be digested by our bodies, but it does provide bulk to the stool to help prevent constipation. It also helps you feel full. Some sources include whole grain breads and cereals, brown rice, and the skins of vegetables and fruit. Soluble fiber is partially digested by our bodies. This type of fiber is considered beneficial for heart health because it may help lower blood cholesterol and blood sugar levels. Some sources, some sources of this fiber include oatmeal, barley, legumes, like chickpeas and lentils, and within the inner parts of vegetables and fruit. One thing to remember, when you start to eat more fiber, be sure to do it slowly and drink lots of fluids to prevent any sort of bowel issue. Health Canada recommends 21 to 38 grams of fiber per day. Our next food group is our grain products, which should take up only one quarter of our plate, and when chosen properly can provide higher amounts of fiber. When deciding which grain products to choose, it is recommended to select whole grain varieties over refined and further processed choices. Healthier options include breads made with cracked wheat, bran, rye, pumpernickel, and oat. Whole grain crackers, such as Melba toast, select cooked cereals, select dry cereals, and try to aim to choose cereals that have 5 grams of fiber per serving. These are choices that should be chosen less often, as they are typically higher in saturated fats, sugar, and salt. These include egg breads, cheese breads, butter rolls, high-fat crackers, granola types of cereals, egg noodles or instant noodles, and commercial cookies, muffins, cakes, and so on. Milk and alternatives make up our last food group. Based on our balanced plate method of eating, 
they are found on the side. Most choices from this food group provide a rich source of calcium, vitamin D, and protein to name a few. They can also provide higher amounts of saturated fat, which is why it is important to make healthier choices as depicted on the next slide. These healthier options include skim or 1% milk, evaporated skim milk, calcium and rich rice milk, part skim or light cheese, 20% milk fat or less, low fat cottage cheese, which would be 1% milk fat or less, non fat or low fat yogurt, including Greek yogurt, and low fat sour cream. Here we have food choices that we should choose less often as they can have a higher saturated fat content. This includes homogenized or 2% milk, cream, including coffee creamers, cheese with more than 20% milk fat, yogurt with more than 2% fat, and regular sour and ice creams. Now that you know how to balance out your plate, if choosing any of your foods from packages, it is very important to check the food label first. The first step is to always look at the serving size. This is located at the top of the nutrition facts table. Determine how much of this food you will be consuming. The second step is to read the percent daily value. The percent daily value helps you see if a specific amount of food has a little or a lot of nutrient. As a rule of thumb, remember the following numbers. 5% daily value or less provides a little of that nutrient, whereas 15% daily value or more is considered a lot of that nutrient. Anywhere in between these two percentages would be a moderate amount of that nutrient. This applies to all nutri nutrients in the nutrition facts table. For our purposes, we encourage your food labels to provide a low percent daily value of saturated and trans fat, where trans reads zero grams, low sodium, and higher fiber. Now, what about the ingredients, you ask? It is important to check our ingredient listing as well. Ingredients are always listed in order of quantity. So, for example, a jar of salsa will have tomatoes as the first ingredient. However, this does not, does not necessarily mean that this might be a healthy product. Our nutrition facts table will always help us better understand a product. Also keep in mind that ingredients can go by several names. As an example, salt can go by sodium benzoate or monosodium glutamate, which is MSG. As you can see in these two ingredient lists, we have sugar as the seventh listed ingredient in example one and only the second ingredient in example two. In this case, we would suggest placing example two back on the shelf. Sodium is the final and one of the most important topics in the nutrition portion of this presentation. Humans require a small amount of sodium in order to maintain health. However, in some people, too much sodium causes blood pressure to rise. High blood pressure increases your risk for heart disease and stroke. So if you're wondering what sodium is, when we break it down, table salt is also called sodium chloride. It is the sodium component in table salt that is cause for concern. Only one teaspoon of salt contains 2,300 milligrams of sodium, which is the maximum recommended daily amount of sodium allowed in one day. So I pose this next question to you. True or false? If you do not add salt to your food, your diet will be low in sodium. The answer is false. The sodium that Canadians add to their food during meal preparation or at the table accounts for only about 11% of the sodium in the diet. Another 12% is naturally present in food. The remaining 77% comes from processed foods sold in grocery stores and food service outlets. Salt is a very common ingredient in processed and prepared food, such as canned soups and processed meat. It is added to enhance taste and is an inexpensive preservative. Sodium may also be added to foods through additives such as disodium phosphate, sodium nitrate, or sodium gluconate. Some foods, such as milk, contain sodium naturally. Too much sodium can increase the risk of high blood pressure. Here we have a visual representation of how much sodium comes from processed foods. Some of these processed foods include cheese, deli meats, sauces, soups, hamburgers, and hot dogs. Dill pickles and other pickled foods are also a surprising source of high amounts of sodium. In order to cut back on the sodium intake in your diet, the number one tip is to take the salt shaker off of the table. Season your food without salt and try instead using lemon juice, fresh herbs, and spices, or salt-free products such as Mrs. Dash. When choosing packaged foods, opt for sodium or salt-reduced foods, and always read your food label. Check with your doctor or dietitian before using a salt substitute, as some interfere with medications. Sea, Himalayan, and kosher salts are not appropriate substitutes to regular table salt, 
as they do still have the same amount of sodium. Choose pickled, processed, cured, smoked, and salted foods less often. And be aware of onion and garlic salts. Use instead onion and garlic powders. Thank you for listening to my portion of today's presentation. For additional information, please visit the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada website. Unlockfood.ca is another wonderful resource. This is a Dietitians of Canada website which provides useful nutrition information, including recipes and meal plans. For information on how to meet with a registered dietitian, feel free to check out the Zares or Real Canadian Superstore websites. There you can find several nutrition packages to connect with the dietitian in your local area. Thank you.